Let's talk about how to build muscle in 30 minutes. Uh, I want to preface this by saying, you know, if you're coming into the conversation with like, I want to build as much muscle as I possibly can. And I only want to spend 30 minutes uh, doing so on a, you know, multi-day basis throughout the week. And we will break this out a little bit and talk about how much you'd really need to do over what time. Um, if you're coming into it with that mindset, there you need to also come into it with this this understanding, and that is over time there's going to be a point of diminishing returns. If you're trying to be a bodybuilder, 30 minute workouts are going to do it for mm-hmm. you, right? If you're trying to obtain a general level of health and wellness, uh, th- this could be very effective for you, right? And if you're trying to to achieve some level of performance, uh, again going back to the original statement, there's going to be a point of diminishing returns. There's a lot of factors that go into this. It'd be a good way to start a, a habit. To gr- yes. So there are some, there's some great things about this and there are some absolute ways that you can build muscle in 30 minutes uh, with 30 minute workouts. And so we'll, we'll talk about that and all the different ways you can uh, to try to break it out because this seems to be, this is a, this is a question like I'm getting like, well, I only have this much time or I, I only want to commit this much time, which is a whole other sort of com- conversation like, wait, what? But uh, I, look, if this is what somebody's got in their head and this is what they're going to do, this is what they're going to do. At least they're doing something. So let's talk about who, first, if we're talking about muscle building, let's talk about which types of people this type of approach might work well for without getting into all the details yet. Um, I just mentioned the person, I'm, I'll first off say like, I hear this from a lot of moms, mm-hmm. like uh, with one or more like toddlers or younger at home, mm-hmm. right? And because they're, they're, it just, whether it's a prioritization of time or their inability to manage the chaos or whatever else, uh, they find that it's really tough to get things done or they're constantly interrupted so they can break out for half an hour and get something done in their garage, even if they have. And some of these moms have incredible home gyms uh, because- whoever else is there in the house is really into it and they've got every piece of equipment known to man. So it's not about not having access. It's more about availability of that sure. access, at least in their mind or what they're telling me. <clears throat> um, 30 minute workouts. So <clears throat> for individuals who might be new to resistance training yeah, so like a, um, or, so like a, or training age, a novice, novice. Yeah. Somebody <clears throat> that hasn't been exercising regularly or ever. Certainly the stimulus that you'll get, you can get in a 30 minute period could yield some pretty good results from muscle gain perspective and beyond uh, as your body is just now starting to adapt. Again, going back to like the advanced person, the advanced bodybuilder or advanced lifter, I still think you can get some pretty good results. It's how you organize it. Uh, we'll talk about that, Jeff. I mean, other populations that you run into that this might work real well for. Well, if you're doing a different type of training program where you're actually doing like an hour, you know, an actual whole training program, you could use 30 minute sessions as a way to, whether it's boost uh, performance from the day before, active recovery, um, just to keep tension on the muscle and to show up to the gym. If you did only had 30 minutes that day, mm-hmm. maybe you did half of your workout, maybe you structured it a little differently. Um, but yeah, there's many ways that you could use 30 minutes. Um, Wisely yeah, and effectively. Yeah. yeah, I remember back to the uh, multi-sport days with the triathlon. Like ugh, there were days where the last thing I wanted to do was lift any any weight. So I, like there was a mindset piece there, but I was already tired. I'd already worked out three hours. You know, I was been on the bike and in the pool or whatever. I bricked something for the day or had an epic, you know, run or something that I needed to do. And part of it was time. Because there's a big commitment of time to all of that, right? But the other part of it was is just having the energy and the let's just say the will to do it. Sometimes, sometimes you just you just wrecked. But I still maintained my my resistance training through even peak times of the you know my training process with with the multi sport stuff. So and I it was usually thirty max forty five minutes, but part of that time was like really working my flexibility and mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, so that ate up at least 10 to 20 minutes of that time. Cause if I didn't do that, it wouldn't matter yeah. how, how much lifting I did. I would have not gotten the benefit from it because I was, I've, you know, I've just been, I've just been tight all the time. So, uh, that, th- those are, those are good populations. Um, I, th- again, I, that I think can, can benefit by this. Again, there are some more advanced populations that could, could also benefit by doing these things. So I think well, the next thing we got to talk about is, is like, okay, well, depending on where I fall on that spectrum, if I'm a beginner 
how often do I need to do this? Let's talk about frequency. Let's like organizing your training plan. Mm -hmm. Like, so, and let's just start with like the week. So if, if I'm a novice to beginner and I'm trying to build muscle and I only have 30 minutes to do it in, what's a good setup for the week? I mean, three days minimum. Anything less than Agreed. that is, yeah. yeah. For, 30, for 30 be, minutes. It could be five too. I mean, yeah, but, and, and for some individuals, depending on what their week looks like, maybe it's that Monday through Friday is the best because their schedule is pretty set. Whereas when it comes to the weekends, then the schedule can sometimes get a little bit funky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so minimum of three days. And I think that's important to 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 hammer on here uh, because what we're looking at is total volume, training volume, right? There has to be, we, we look at volume and intensity when we're looking at muscle building and strength building. And you, you have to be giving yourself, we've said this before on other podcasts, there's a minimum dose of stimulus that your body needs to get in order to uh, respond and provide some type of result, whether that's increased strength, um, or hypertrophy in this case, mm-hmm. right? Where we're talking about muscle growth. So if I'm only doing that two days a week, mm-hmm. right? For a half hour, we're talking 60 minutes yep. with all the muscles in the body, right? Yep. And all the things that need to happen or whatever, you're going to be hard pressed to see a significant result. Now, there might be some studies that show otherwise. Um, and I'm sure that there are, because if I look up studies, I can find a study that supports anything. <laughs> but I think it would be very limited on, on the population uh, you know, it was probably a very specific population you're not gonna of people. Have many studies to back it. Up. I was right. going to say, I'm right. not sure if yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with any. That's more maintenance. I like a body of knowledge than like one study. One study <laughs> will kind of give you like maybe we should look in this general direction. But if there's not multiple studies coming to back up, it. I mean, that's my point. Yeah, that's my point. It's probably a very limited population Absolutely. of people that suffer from some type of thing, and they're mm-hmm. looking at you know, or taking some, having to take some kind of medication for some other thing. And does this help? And you know, that provides a really cool article for somebody. Oh, you only got a resistance train for two times a week for 20 minutes and you'll be great. Mm-hmm. Just bullshit. And that's what we hear a lot of coming out of this industry and the medical industry with regard to being healthier. So uh, I digress and move on. So yeah, minimum of three days a week, that's still only 90 minutes, you know, start to finish of mm-hmm. your resistance training focused Activity. It's one and a half Game of Thrones. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. It's not very long. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's not no. very long. It really would be the min, the absolute minimum amount of, of stimulus that you'd have to give yourself. Uh, but again, if you're a novice, uh, that's a really good place to start. And for a lot of novices that come in, like to any kind of a training program, you know, for us, a lot of times it's just like, well, we need them to commit to a minimum of two days a week of of you know exercise, or let's just say sessions with us. <laughs> And with that, you're going to get, it, usually a session is an hour mm-hmm. sort of start to finish. And so you're looking at 120 minutes of, of activity or, again, trying to give a holistic approach to the program. The good majority of that for a novice is generally going to be spent around strength building, mm-hmm. right? And that for a novice, again, that would probably include some hypertrophy uh, in, in, the, in the program. But again, two days a week is really minimum. Now, obviously, we're encouraging them to do some homework outside, some additional activity, uh, and that two days a week is going to be good until it isn't, yep. until it's not enough stimulus, mm-hmm. right? Until they need more stimulus in order to maximize the fitness fatigue model yep. where we give that stimulus, recover back to baseline, then they recover beyond baseline, they get the quote-unquote gains, and then we add another stimulus or another session in, and we work back through that curve up and up and up and up. So, uh Starting out at 30 minutes as a novice, three days a week, you should be expect pretty quickly, you, could, you, you probably need to move to four days a week. Otherwise, you're going to reach a level that you're going to just merely be man, maintaining simply because you don't have enough time mm-hmm. to provide any more stimulus. Yeah. So we're looking at the stimulus. We're looking at like how much weight are we pushing or loads are, are, are we pushing? What are we doing with our rest time? Mm-hmm. What is the complexity of the exercises that we're, we're doing? How does that send the muscle building signals. Mm-hmm. Um, example, like you're going to get a lot more benefit out of doing exercises that are big compound complex movements like deadlifting or squatting versus doing... Uh, Leg curls. Well, I was going to go someplace <laughs> different. I was going to go like glute bridging oh, and yeah. arm curls, right? Mm-hmm. To, to quote unquote tone and firm those areas. You're going to get very little <laughs> out of nice that. You nice tone glute? Yeah, you're going to get very little Come out on, of that. Man. Right. So like a quarter again, there. it goes back to mindset and, and what I'm doing there. So again, it's going to be minimum of three could maybe be up to seven 
days a week. You can probably mm-hmm. do it every day, right? If you're only, as long as, again, you're not yep. overdoing it, you're not over, you're, you're not under recovered. And this has, there's never a day where I'm just sitting on my couch, like, oh, I'm recovering. Right. Like, all right, let's be We're real. doing something, but you can do this up to seven days a week. Um, some people, I don't want to mistake this with what people will refer to as like trigger sessions or. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. There's, I mean, people are talking about it's this like term, that. workout yeah. snacks. Um, oh, really? I've heard of that. I'm not a big fan of that they're, one. They're encouraging snacks. people to get up and exercise yes, at for their desk. five to 10 minutes and, you know, again, do that multiple I mean, times dude, if per that's day. You, you know what? I worked movement. up, I worked in, in corporate America for a year. There's no fucking way. Who's doing in that? My, yeah. In my dress shoes, in my dress or my dress shoes and my slacks, am I doing that shit? Yeah, no, so come nobody, on. Nobody's doing Did that. you see them in China, Japan? They the construct the the well, which place the constru- they're, well, both they're, they're both. two different places. <laughs> both they're both, both Asian countries. Both, yeah, <laughs> they stretch before they do the construction work. Oh, is that right? So yeah, they're you all know what the they liners. do that UPS used to yeah, do that. Yeah, I don't know. They still do. I've, I've, I don't know. I'm not very versed on the UPS, but I've you know they're, they're out there doing it. So there's mm-hmm. that's made they it sit somewhere. at the desks. Oh wait, you said construction. Sorry, construction work. Yeah. I don't know about Hitachi or anything like that. <laughs> the, the that's a cultural thing. Right. Yeah. It's a, cult, it, yeah. it's a cultural thing. And it's understood that this is good for our health. Mm-hmm. I'm not being made to do it like the people over at UPS. So it's a different, there's a different it's, attitude. Yeah. Right? There's a different mindset in going into it. And so going back to this 30 minutes. Okay. So that's how I might structure my week. It's going to be three mm-hmm. to seven days of, of training. Right. Again, a lot of what I'm going to get out of this is going to be dependent on my training age. Right. Because again, a novice could generally get, probably get more muscle gain out of the shorter workouts in this format that we're talking about now um, than the person that's a little bit more advanced. Not that you can't, For sure. uh, but as you get more advanced, you need to get way more specific about your exercise selection, intensity, volume. There's less room, I would say, for maybe error or yeah. putzing around. Like right? for me, if I was going to use the 30 minute and be like, okay, this is what I need to do. And let's say it's push day. Like I literally could do eight to 10 sets of bench press with zero warm up, right. okay, because I am skilled in that movement, and right. today we just didn't have the time to do it and get after it. And you kind of should be able to do that. But of your eight to ten sets, are you going to have some build sets in there? So is that would that be considered a warm up? So I I do do build sets, but when I start doing my working sets, that's what's on paper and that's what counts. So I might okay. be doing eight to ten sets of my working work. Sets. I don't Got count it. build sets, right? So you're not counting that into your Never. volume of work, right? Because it's yeah. not a it's it's not working in your it's mind. It's not my base. It's right. not my baseline but threshold you, push, right? But you have a really high level of awareness of what is challenging you and what isn't. For right? sure, what is movement, mm-hmm. uh, and at what point does that movement become a challenge or stimulus enough to affect? strength gains, mm-hmm. hypertrophy gains, power, or whatever yeah. that we're looking for. So to, to, to be clear, if you're a novice early and you got a young training age here, uh, you could be uh, doing less and still getting more, you know? But that equation changes as you get Absolutely. further down the path. Yeah. Um, but you could. But continue, I love that you could use it for. You could sides. continue to do this, and it might be part of your only part of your workout program. Thirty minute sessions a week mm-hmm. as you become more more advanced, depending on what your schedule looks like or why the hell you're doing this in the first place. Yeah. Um, I don't generally encourage people to get around the mindset of like I'm only going to work out thirty minutes, you know, a few times a week. It's great if you've been doing nothing. Great, but I I want you to think about doing something every day, some movement every day, and resistance training should be a major focus of of anybody's program, uh, in my opinion. So going back, how would I structure my workout if I'm a novice, my workouts Mm -hmm. during the week, if I'm only working out three days a week? Like, what exercises did I do? How many reps and sets should I do? Like, how might I kind of put this together? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I think I as far as your like, primary, he was at CC, hands, hands, I, I didn't know. All right. <laughs> well, as far as your primary exercises, I mean, um, for a lower extremity, I think squat and some type of hinge yeah, are really important to make sure that you have on at least one of one of those days um, a squat one day and hinge mm-hmm. one day. Um, and then, as far as you know, for um, your upper extremity, you've got to get your your pushing and your pulling. So um, I think this is where programming comes in as far as how you integrate the pushing and pulling or the lower extremity. So, you know, doing compound sets, whether that's um, like for the upper body, if you're doing a barbell bench press and then you're doing an incline chest press uh, with dumbbells, that would be a compound set. So doing the same um exercise for a muscle group back to back, or if you were to do superset. 
So doing, let's say, a barbell bench press and then a seated row. So yeah, I think so. I to get people's heads wrapped around this. I mean, here's whether you're working on three, five, or seven days a week. There's some basic movement patterns you need to be that, that you would should be focused on in only a 30 minute session, right? Yep. Because these are the ones that are going to give you the most bang for your buck, both both from being a better mover, mm-hmm. healthier individual, prepared for anything that might hit you in life kind of stuff, yep. to building muscle. So yep. you're going to squat, you're going to hinge, you're going to push, you're going to pull. Mm-hmm. Um, there should be some type of a lunging pattern in mm-hmm. there probably, and you're going to do, you should be probably doing some rotation or some rotational work. So within the pushing and the pulling, you got vertical and horizontal pushing and pulling, uh, and so those can get mixed in throughout the week. So going back to what you were saying there, uh, CC, like I'm on one day, I'm at least hitting probably two of those movement patterns. And I think what you said was like, maybe I'm doing my quote, quote unquote, horizontal push or bench press movement, mm-hmm. right. Coupled with my hinging pattern, mm-hmm. my, my, uh, my deadlift movement. And right. those are going to be my primary movements that I'm going to be focused on. And within those primary, those primary movements, I've got to be providing enough stimulus in that 30 minute time to actually get to, to stimulate some muscle oh, growth. Response, yeah. yeah. And to, to Jeff's point, you got to get there kind of quick, mm-hmm. right? Cause you don't have a lot of time yeah. To, yeah. To, to mess around. So a higher level of awareness in terms of what type of warm up, what type of build set I might need to use to, to ultimately get into a working set where I'm doing three sets mm-hmm. again, hypertrophy, somewhere between eight and 12, maybe as many as 15 repetitions, depending on what exercise I'm doing and what I'm, what I'm focused on for the day. I got to get there fast yeah. so that I have enough, enough stimulus. So there can't be a lot of messing around here. Mm-hmm. But to your point again, Cece, you're picking two primary movements in a three-day-a-week pattern mm-hmm. or a three-day-a-week, sorry, workout program to really target, right? Correct. How, okay, so you just mentioned like um, the sorry so the say, bench press to, to to hinge or to deadlift. Bench press to, mm-hmm, to, to deadlift, correct. So that'd be like day one. Mm-hmm. All right, and then like day two might be squat to pull a pull up or a row of some sort, mm-hmm. and then on the third day maybe it's a lunge pattern of some sort, um, walking lunges, lateral lunges, and then um, maybe doing an overhead overhead press, um, or some other type of, um, vertical push of some sort. Sure. Maybe it's for, I don't know, dips, chest and shoulders or something like that. Um, and then adding some rotation in. Yeah. So you just added the third piece in, right. Which again, coming back to like your first day where you're on your, your, your bench press and your deadlift, Mm -hmm. we said press or push and, and, uh, and hinge. You're going to have time in there to add in some ancillary stuff. I mean, yes. like you, if you want to work your arms or you want to work your abs, you want to work your shoulders uh, specifically in terms of building muscle there, you can still do that in these 30 minute workouts. And you're going to need to be thinking about that probably more in like an active rest or maybe like a uh, compound or a, sorry, a superset type of fashion, mm-hmm. right? Where we're, we, we can combine mm-hmm. other exercises. You're not just doing the two movements. You can be doing maybe as many as four or more, mm-hmm. uh, depending on how you organized mm-hmm. yourself and what it was, what muscle group it might be during this 30 minute session. So I could be using as an example on my push and hinge day, my bench press deadlift day. Mm-hmm. I st- may start with my bench press. May- maybe people disagree with that. No, I should start with the hinge because it's more compound complex. Eh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Because if I superset in my, with my bench press, like my bicep curls mm-hmm. or something like that, I, I'm working, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of volume done and say, if I kind of thought about this and like, if I broke up my two big movements in two 15 minute blocks, mm-hmm. right? So I'm in my first block with my, my, my uh, bench press and, and bicep curl. I get a lot of volume done in that, in that 15 minute block before then I move to my more complex compound movements, movement, the hinge, the deadlift, where I might need a little bit more recovery time and I don't, I won't have the capacity at this point to maybe do the bicep curl mm-hmm. or whatever else. I could flop that as well. Yep. I don't, there's not a right or wrong yep. way to do that. Mm-hmm. You, you choose based on maybe what you want your focus for to be the day or for that day. Like if bench press is really hard for you and deadlifts aren't. Start there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, dude, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Focus on the, on the skill or focus on the thing that you need the most, the most work on. So. And as a novice, I have to say, I do like the, um, 
the deadlift to the, the push uh, combination and then the squat to a pull combination just because when you're deadlifting and then you're turning around and you're pushing. So you're not, as a novice, wearing your grip out. Because yeah. if you're pulling, if you're rowing, if you're pulling up and then going to have to deadlift, then your grip can give out before potentially your legs or your upper body for the pulling. Yeah. So the organization of this stuff, it could change. The following week, maybe you do the deadlift first mm-hmm. and the, or excuse yeah, the deadlift first and then the push and the, the bicep curl. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe you're doing a different type of push. So you can choose different pushes, right? Mm-hmm. The whole idea is, is we do need a certain amount of volume and intensity within these workouts in order to get done what we're trying to get done, which is muscle growth, right? Mm-hmm. Gains is what we we opened up with. And I will define gains as muscle building. Um, so we mentioned like, hey, that's how you con- that's how you might organize yourself on day one. If you went to day two, so if that was Monday, now we're on Wednesday on a three-day-a-week program, then we're into our squat. What, what haven't we done? We haven't done our vertical or horizontal pull. And maybe on that day, we want to train our triceps. So I might approach it exactly the same way with just a different combination of exercises. Um, and then, as you mentioned, maybe you go into a lunge pattern on Friday, day three, you're, you're putting in more now of a vertical or overhead press, and you want to work your abdominals, or you want to do some specific shoulder or middle back work, or you're addressing some other particular body part, you can throw those in to those days. Again, that could be very beneficial and very effective for a while mm-hmm. until it isn't, mm-hmm. right? Until you need more volume for that particular muscle group. Right. Like volume and load. Like I'm trying to grow my quads. Right. I'm trying to grow my back. Uh, and in which case, you know, horizontal pulling and maybe vertical pulling, you know, two exercises per week. Right. Is not going to be enough for me to continue to see gains. So what's the answer? You have to add another day. You might have to add another day. Right. You, or multiple days. Five minutes. Or yep. you add more time. But bottom mm-hmm. line, and this is the point is like is the, the amount of volume is going to have to equate right? To provide the stimulus. So whether that's adding more time to your workout or adding more frequency, uh, more days, mm-hmm. you know, more sessions to, to, to hit those same body parts, that's going to have to happen. Uh, and again, that's why we say it works till it, till it doesn't. Um, I see a lot of, of advanced people add these 30 minute sessions in or, or short sessions, go back to the whole trigger session type thing to work like trouble body parts or body parts that don't need as much recovery, yeah. um, like their arms or mm-hmm. their calves or their abs, or, you know, they're really isolating their delts or something like that. Uh, I see them adding like small, like these short, short sessions in, like it may be in the same day as other sessions. Mm-hmm. So again, at the end of the day, they're trying to get more volume, mm-hmm. right. Without having an, an intensity, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, without taking away from, the other, the rest of their workout, but that's, that's somebody that's got more time on their hands. For sure. That's You're more really, advanced. yeah, you have a lot of, yeah. You know, what about cluster sets as far as for individuals who either, um, maybe they're not as novice because you have to have some kind of base underneath you to be able to know what your, I don't know, 70, 80, 90% of, um, maybe your three rep max might be, but maybe somebody who's a little bit more advanced, um, like Jeff said earlier, that wants to augment, their workouts during the week, let's say they get, you know, maybe two one hour workouts a week, but then they want to take, you know, three days of 30 minute workouts. Um, what about cluster sets? Let's talk about cluster sets. I mean, how do you define a cluster set? So my understanding of cluster sets is where you do multiple mini sets within one set and in between those mini sets or, um, of repetitions, there's a, a period, a short period of rest. So let's say for hypertrophy um, and you're working in a, a 12 rep range, then maybe you're not maybe you're doing three sets of four repetitions with 10 to 15 seconds rest in in between those three repetitions until you get to 12. So you're getting the same amount of volume done. But, but with, you're working at a higher intensity or load. You're able to do more load. Mm-hmm. So rather than put the weight down 10 reps in, let's say, let's just use a nice round number like 300 pounds, right? So well, we'll use and we'll just make it really easy math for, but let's say it's a hundred pounds I on your love, squat. I love right? it. To make you feel better, Stacey? Yeah. Math. It's our math queen over there. <laughs> so you got a hundred pounds on the, on the barbell and you're going to squat it, right? And you're going to do you, and you, you, today your, your workout calls for three sets of 10, 
right? Or three sets of 12. 12. Yeah, we're working like maybe more hypertrophy, right? Because that's what we're trying to do, get some, get some gains. That's a total of 36 repetitions, right? Right. Three sets, three of, sets 12. of 12. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's volume. That's mm-hmm. the volume of work we're doing within the squat for today. And I've got 100 pounds on there. Well, and 100 pounds is what I can do for, I know I can do that for at least two sets of 12, right? Or maybe I get 12 on the first one, 11 on the next one, and I can only get 10 on the next one, right? So I'm, because reasonably speaking, as I'm going through my workout, I should be getting fatigued and mm-hmm. I should not be as good on the third set yeah. as I am on the first set. Uh, so what I'm, again, managing that fitness fatigue, to fatigue model here is I'm trying to max out as much volume and intensity as I can, or much intensity as I can within the volume that I've given. All right. So at the end, if I did 12, 11, 10, I didn't do 36 reps, mm-hmm. right? Only did 33 reps because I took one off or two off or one off the first one and two off the last one. Mm-hmm. Sorry. One off the second set, two off the last set with me, with you, with me. <laughs> All right. And I used the same amount of weight for that entire, for the, those entire three sets. Let's, as an example. So let's go back to the cluster set. So if I broke up my 12 repetitions into, let's say, three mini sets. Mm-hmm. So in, in, I would do basically four reps. Then I would take a short little rest. Mm-hmm. I would do four more reps, take a short little rest, and do four more reps. For your first set. For my first set. Yeah. But be true to your rest and not give yourself so 20 it's to 30 it's seconds. It's less than rest. 10 seconds. Yeah. It's less ten than seconds. 10 seconds in this cluster set, right? It's less than 10 seconds. We actually have a video that outlines this whole thing um, and, and demonstrates exactly how you can do that. But effectively what I could do then is I could do more load. Mm-hmm. I could do I could do more load because I do have that rest. I could, I could add on. So if my one rep max is... Uh, sorry, if my one rep max is, let's say my one rep max is 125 pounds. I can't do 10 sets of that, mm-hmm. right? Or uh, so t- sorry, 10 reps of that. So I back it off, right, to 100 because I know that 100 pounds I can get 10 reps in. Well, if I did these mini sets and I was getting this mini rest, then I could move that, let's say that weight up to 110 pounds. So effectively, I haven't done anything with my volume. I've kept my volume the same, right? But I've Increase. increased the intensity that I'm using during that, uh, during that, that entire workout. Mm -hmm. So I've pushed more weight, or in this case, I've squatted more weight with the same amount of reps, um, and, and completed all the volume that's in my, in my set. Exactly. So it's a great way to maximize your intensity in short time periods, but this is an advanced technique. Oh yeah. To your point, Mm -hmm. uh, Cece, you really, you have to understand, say what your three rep maximum is. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to really understand it. You're going to be sore boy. Yeah. 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 Cause now you're, again, you're pushing your body beyond its limits, but that's a, the cluster set is a really great way to, uh, maximize that, that intensity in the shorter time period. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other thing to think about is like, that's kind of a tempo type of thing. Uh, you can work tempos mm-hmm. uh, and increase your intensity uh, through different tempos, slower, uh, eccentric lowering. Uh, you could work some explosive stuff, but you know, from on the, um, on the muscle building side of things, you could get a lot out of working uh, eccentric and pause reps mm-hmm. or accentuated eccentric type, type movements. We, we do a a couple of videos on that as well. You're on the RDF channel of, uh, of how to incorporate accentuated eccentrics into your program. So if you're on this 30 minute pathway and you're really like, this is what I got, that's all you got. Well, get it. I mean, we hear that shit all the time. It's not an excuse to not, not work out. And it's certainly not an excuse not to get gains. You just have to know how to apply this stuff. And the bottom line at the end of the day is you can get gains, but as you get more advanced, you're going to be limited because just simply because you can't apply the same volume and intensities in the, in that shorter amount of time. So you, you could be limited. 